I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. I'm not gonna say it. Oh, Pearl? Harbor is the obvious choice. Pearl? Harbor. Pearl? Harbor. And finally on Pearl, Harbor is the obvious choice. I think you guys get the point. One of Harbor's abilities is a smoke-like projectile that will protect anyone inside of it, meaning they cannot take damage. If only Harbor was around to pop one of these back in 1941. <clears throat> All of the elevation changes on Pearl can be heavily used to your advantage to catch the enemy players off guard, and this cipher fell faster than Germany's economy after World War II. I call this one the Pearl Harbor sneak attack. Fuck, she moved. Guess I'll just have to take them out anyway. Sneaking up behind enemies is a good way of ensuring wins for your team. And after some aim that's on par with the stormtrooper from Star Wars, we're able to take out two enemies. Once again, we see ourselves on the flank before killing Jet. And honestly, we're only able to pick up this kill on Sage because of the fantastic utility usage that I have. And now we see ourselves back in a position to use the coveted Pearl Harbor sneak attack. Wait a minute. Anyway, even with our atrocious movement, we can still handle all three of these enemies simply because they're just worse than me. Overall, Pearl is a very open map and should be played with aggressiveness, and Harbor on the other hand can be used as a very offensive agent, so when you're playing on Pearl, Harbor should be played super aggressively to try to take down enemies in a short period of time to try and put your team at an advantage. For example, imagine you're just chilling and all of a sudden a bunch of planes appear out of nowhere and just raid you. You have no time to react and before you know it, the destruction is devastating, and that's what it's like to play Harbor on Pearl. We are finding ourselves in a very bad situation where we can take out the enemy that's on the bomb before getting spammed by util. After that, we can take out the another enemy that's on site but before we can then pop our orb which will protect us from the Sobo that is shooting his ult, but now he cannot shoot his gun on us and we're able to just defuse in peace. And that is a round easily secured. Oh no, what's this? We're not on Pearl anymore? What are we gonna do? Ha ha ha, your inability to game has made me Banish you from Pearl. Fight in the arena on all the other sites of the many uh, champion. No, a, a hero. No, uh, fight. What is it again? What agents? Okay, agents to prove your worth. Well, guys, you know what that I'm means. A bird. We must prove that we're able to play on all the maps besides Pearl, so we can get back to only playing on Pearl. I mean, honestly, this just comes down to a simple skill dump because it's obvious that I'm just better than him. And just to prove it, I'll do it again. Another one. Moving over to Haven, and it honestly feels like the enemies want me to get back to Pearl because they're just lining up for me to take an easy 3k going into this match. Just kind of too easy for us, to be honest. The only thing that Chamber knows how to do is wave a white flag, so how can he possibly hope to kill me? I honestly don't know which one is worse, surrendering or losing a battle you should have won. The only person capable of answering is obviously the Frenchman. Here we can see the average Instalock Reyna attempting to secure one kill and not effectively throw it around for their entire team. Honestly, an amazing ult which helps us take out Chamber, and it's just bullying at this point, like I feel like Chamber is getting abused. Even the enemy team is against Chamber, as Sage reses him just to then be killed by me again, which secures me in clean ass 4k for the round. I like to think that everyone's brain can function on some level, but honestly, this omen doesn't leave me with much faith. Either he has actually no respect for me, or he's actually just completely brain dead. I wish I could have said that this was the Pearl Harbor sneak attack, and it even could have been a double Pearl Harbor sneak attack. And as we push forward to continue to take control of the round, our teammate dies, effectively putting us in a 2v1, and what do you know? Chamber is the only thing left between me and clutching round. But once again, he's just no match for me. Put the sheriff in my hands and you might as well just call game already. Honestly, the other team should take lesson from Chamber and just throw up the white flag because there's no point in fighting against me once this gun is in my hands. As we try and force ourselves into a 1v1 with Chamber to all but secure the round, we fight to the death against Revenant from Apex Legends and the glorified Monster Energy Can. We then can secure the 1-on-1 with Chamber, and you might as well already figured out the outcome. We see ourselves in a 1v4 situation. Surely there isn't any way we can win, but to no surprise, the enemies continue to peak and we can then put it into a 2v1 situation, which is much easier to win. But as long as the enemy team doesn't push me, it should be fine, right? Well, unfortunately for them, I'm a master at Haven and we can now move on to the next map. And now a nice change of scenery. On to Lotus. It's time to make the new map into our new stomping grounds. Harbor yearns for the knife kill, but not just any knife kill. He can only feel whole once he does it on Pearl. You know, just your average jet on a way to give you a free kill and a free round at that. 
After ignoring our ult, which tells us exactly where the enemy is, we can still kill them due to an overwhelming difference in skill between us. Damn, honestly, this new update where you can't hit Astra when she's in Astra form seems really overpowered, to be honest. I hope they get rid of it. 1 HP in a dream just isn't a dream for us, since this round might as well be an automatic win. Well, I think it's time to test our metal on Lotus. We must defend CZ like our life depends on it. We can take out Neon of Sky since there's just simply no match for us. And the raise makes it a 2v1 and I can almost feel the ace in the air. If we secure the ace and with it, our ticket to getting closer and closer to Pearl. Moving on to Fracture, where it seems our aim still hasn't improved, but at least we're still getting kills. Like I said earlier, if you want to play Harbor, you need to play him aggressively to take control of rounds early. His wave especially is super good at doing that because it allows you to take aggressive off angles and push enemies in spots they normally wouldn't expect. Back at it again with the knife kill and it's just automatic. You know what I'm thinking? Why not try to double it? And with the double, I think that's sufficient enough to move on to the next map. Ascent is my favorite map in the game, so we should have no problem getting kills on it, especially with the Sheriff. We started out with one, and to nobody's surprise, as we push forward we can see ourselves getting a nice clean double Sheriff kill to start out Ascent. Harbor's ult can also be used to just clear out enemies and just the Sheriff kills keep on coming for us, especially when we're on Ascent. Sometimes sacrifices have to be made for the greater good, or in this case, my Valorant match. I don't know what it is that makes the Ascent become an unstoppable force when it's in my hands, much like two projectiles dropped out of a plane in 1945. Anyway, that was a sick 3k if I do say so myself. Would it really be a Valorant video if a teammate didn't get chat banned for saying slurs? And finally, on to Icebox. To start off this map, we're gonna have the average Reyna player warming up to get her first kill in a Valorant match ever. Never seen before because Reyna seem to never be able to get kills no matter how good they actually are. Then something just snapped! Something inside of me! I didn't care anymore! I didn't care about being better than Kakarot! I didn't care about being a Super Saiyan! I didn't care if I lived! I didn't care about anything! And then, it happened! Sneaking up on your enemies time. with Harbor seems to be super effective, which is really ironic when you come to think about it. And after killing our enemies with nothing but pure skill, we end the clip at 4 kills for no reason in particular, to be honest with you. We seem to be set up for what appears to be yet another movement diff. This is completely balanced, honestly, if you ask me. I don't really see the problem with this at all. After being dropped at just 30 HP, we cannot be phased by it. We must movement gap them. Movement is the most important thing in this game, and when you combine it with the enemy team being completely dog shit, it can combo for a really easy, nice kills for you. Just like this Jed who has no idea where she is, and honestly he's just completely lost. We know Sage is under us, we can reposition ourselves to get on Sage's wall and get a nice clean angle on the Sage. Now that our teammate has died, we get a precise location on the enemy, we can finally get on the wall, we spot her under a rafter, and when she finally peeks, it's a free kill for us. Welcome, little water boy. I see you have completed my mission. You are now blowed back into Pearl. It looks like we're finally back on Pearl, so we can't mess this up. This Killjoy is no match for my perfect crosshair placement, so we're easily able to make it a 4v1, and with surprisingly good utility usage, we can get a new positioning before surprising Reyna. We know the final two enemies are going to be somewhere on site, so we can push forward behind the wall to try to get a better angle than them, and to our advantage, the enemies try and attempt to double swing me, but unfortunately for them, I'm simply just a better player. Now in a 1v1, we hope that Raze is on the flank where we can throw our orb down and secure a free defuse. We see a nade come in, we pray it doesn't kill us, and it gets us all the way down to 8 HP, but unfortunately for her, it's just an easy clutch. 